We are currently working on the third video of stoichiometry and the problems we were working on were ones where we were determining the amount within, whether it's the number of ions, atoms, or now we're going to see hydrate, water of hydration in the formula. We're going to be using both coefficients and subscripts this time. Now, Epsom salt, I tried to write these so you'd get something interesting out of that. Epsom salt, your mom or dad may have some at home, is magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. So we're going to do a quick review of how we write formulas on this one. Magnesium's plus two, sulfate's minus two, so they cancel one another out to make a neutral formula unit. Now, a hydrate means that water is very tightly bound in the crystal structure, and we use that dot to indicate that water is very tightly bound there. If we heated it extensively, and we will do that in a lab, we could eliminate that water. And so the question is, how many water molecules are bound to the magnesium sulfate if I have 25 grams of Epsom salt? And so I'm going to start with my given, and remember we have to go through the heart of chemistry, which is the mole. So I have 25 grams of the Epsom salt. Now mass to moles use molar mass. The question you might have here is do we count those waters in the molar mass? And the answer is yes. If I go to the jar in my back room, or if I go get magnesium sulfate, that water is part of that little solid crystalline powdery kind of stuff that I'm going to measure out. And so I have to include it in my molar mass. And if you do this, you'd get 246.47 grams. That's the hydrate. If we were dealing with just the anhydrate, that's the name of without water, anhydrate, then we wouldn't include the water, but you have to buy the bottle that specifically says the anhydrous or anhydrate form. So I've got one mole of Epsom salt, and that is the molar mass. Again, I'm assuming you know how to calculate a molar mass. If that is a bad assumption, please, by all means, come in and see me so I can work with you on those. Now, I have a choice here. It's asking me how many water molecules. Now remember, I can do this at the mole-mole level, or I can do it at the molecule-molecule level. This time, I'm going to do it at the mole-mole level, just to show you that difference, that it all works out mathematically the same, and it's conceptually the same. So for every one mole of Epsom salt, that seven, given to me by the word hepta, tells me that I have seven moles of water tightly bound to the magnesium sulfate. Now I need to get to molecules of water. I made it through the heart safely. And we need to get to molecules. Molecules are a count. When we're doing a count, remember we use count Avogadro's number. So for every one mole of water, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. We can use that for bonds, we can use that for atoms, we can use that for molecules, anything we want. And I'm going to put that answer down here so that I have room for my next one. To two sig figs, because 25 grams has two sig figs, I have 4.3 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. So again, we went through the heart, and then this, these two steps can be interchanged. Just label them properly so it's clear that you understand what you're talking about. Now the next question says, how many oxygen atoms are in this same amount? Now you really could start from here if you wanted and go to oxygen. I'm simply gonna, going to start from the beginning and set it up for you again as if it was its own little problem. I have grams of Epsom salt, and I want to get rid of grams. Mass to moles, use molar mass. So for every one mole of the Epsom salt, I have 
0.47 grams. Now I want to find out my oxygens. Now let's look at the formula carefully because there's two sources of oxygen in this formula. The sulfate gives me four and the waters give me another seven. So I actually have 11 moles of oxygen available for every one mole of Epsom salt. Not sure why you would want to know that at this stage, but you know, for some of it, it could be a reaction issue. For our purposes, we're simply using it as an example for how to use subscripts and coefficients in going to problems within. Now, I, it did ask me for atoms, and I want to get rid of moles, and I want to go to atoms, and atom is a count. When you're counting, you use count Avogadro's number whether we're counting bonds, molecules, or atoms. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, if we did that mathematics, remember you multiply across the top, you divide everything across the bottom, and for our final answer, we would get 6.7 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen. So, that is primarily how you use subscripts and a hydrate coefficient to talk about amounts within a, in this case, formula unit. Now, I want to move on to another conversion factor that gets us to the mole, and you loved this in pre-AP. In fact, you love it so much, you'll want to use it all the time, even when you're not supposed to use it. The key is, first, it has to be a gas. You can never, ever, ever use this, nor can you use PVNERT for solids or liquids or aqueous. It's got to be a gas. Not only that, it has to be a gas at standard temperature and pressure. And the standard for ideal, for gases, not ideal or not, is going to be zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin, and then the equivalent of one atmosphere trying to get you used to seeing that uh, SI unit, moving into SI unit realm for our pressure measurements. Now, when this is true, so you've got to check that all of this is true. You have to check that it's a gas. You need to check the temperature, pressure. I almost made a mistake when I was working on this because I used the wrong standard temperature. So you've got to be very careful. Again, it only works for a gas and only when that gas is at STP. But boy, if you can recognize that it's valid, you can do a very, very quick conversion. So in this case, it says how many moles are present in 32 liters of dinitrogen monoxide at STP. Now we're getting into the stoichiometric way that we use to name and write formulas for our covalence. We use the stock system for our ionics. For covalence, we use prefixes. So this tells me, the di tells me I have two nitrogens. The mono tells me I have one oxygen. I'm going to start with my given. I have 32 liters. Since it's a gas and since it's a STP, get rid of liters, go to moles for every one mole, and it doesn't matter what the gas is, as long as it's a gas and as long as it's at STP, I can use that simpler conversion factor, and I would get 1.4 moles. Okay, that goes through some of the things, most of which we had before, but we needed to dredge out of the back of our minds. And next we're going to be moving on to reaction stoichiometry and then into some formula stoichiometry. Come in and see me if you're needing some tutorials.